Whoa, whoa. It just went the wrong side of a traffic island. Oh, but for some reason we're just slowing down here. I don't know why. Um, it has suddenly, I'm gonna have to override. It thinks it's a 30 kilometer an hour limit and it's trying to slow me down on a freeway. Tesla has gone and dropped the bombshell we were all expecting, but way, way earlier than most expected. It is introducing full self-driving, supervised in brackets, to its range. And this, Australia and New Zealand, is the first right-hand drive market in the world that is receiving it. It is very exciting, but even more exciting than that is I'm going to actually try it out not in the confines of a lovely, safe driving center like this, but we're taking it out on the public road. Okay, so when I want to go, all I do is I hit navigate, put in my route destination, I've let my foot off the brake, it brings up a little blue button, that says start full self-driving supervised, press and hold. And as soon as I release the button, <laughs> we're away. Oh, it cuts it pretty fine to other cars. So here we are, we're just in a regular little park car park, negotiating this at walking pace, which is absolutely what you should be doing. That's what I would be doing as a driver. This is where the true test starts though. We are emerging onto the public road. So here we go. Traffic in two directions. There's a Mercedes coming in that direction, but it chose that was safe, safe enough, and it was. And we are away. We are out in the wild on the public road. Oh my God. <laughs> it feels very strange. Straight up to 50 kilometers an hour. It feels confident. It feels like it, it's got this. And I kind of believe it has. So this is a big deal because this is the first time anyone in the world is testing Tesla's full self-driving, in brackets, supervised in a right-hand drive car on public roads. I'm sorry if that's a bit of a mouthful, but it's a pretty big deal. The other big deal is we are not in a controlled environment. I assumed that the first demonstration of this would be very much in a controlled environment, a proving ground, closed off to the public, top secret. No, here we are, we're out on, <laughs> we're out on roads just around Brisbane on any normal working day. That is a true statement of confidence in Tesla and credit to them because you have to be pretty confident that your technology is gonna to work to put a bunch of journalists with cameras and you'll notice no one in the passenger seat. Literally, it's just me and the Tesla. So let's hope this goes well. All right, coming up to- left onto Sir Samuel Griffith Drive. There we are, it applied the indicator We've come to the, there's no traffic around, pretty easy one for it to deal with, but I'll tell you what's chilling is how quickly you get used to it. You know, I know that sounds strange. I thought I would be literally a knot of anxiety for the entire trip. But actually, it's incredible how willingly I've handed over my safety to a machine and a computer. I hope I don't regret that. There's a car coming, but safe distance, I would absolutely have done that. And then we've got another, it's quite a strange little junction. It's having a good look round. It didn't just fly out. It was like it actually genuinely was considering all the information it had at its disposal. It didn't just careen out into the road. It, it's actually bizarre how human it feels. That might sound like a strange thing to say, but I assumed it would have be full of glitches and strange things that make it feel like a computer is steering the car, but it's it's like it's been trained by a human, and I suppose to an extent that's what has happened. But yeah, it feels it does a lot of the things that I would absolutely do at the wheel myself. Now that may not be advisable all the time, but all I'm saying is it has a very human feel to it. It doesn't feel too automated. There's one other thing that this car does that I've noticed, and, and it, for all its information and all its cameras and data that it uses to, to drive safely, it can't spot little things like potholes. And a couple of times I would have, oh, there's one right there. A couple of times I would have seen that coming and avoided it, uh, especially with a vehicle with low profile tires and expensive 
alloy wheels. But it can't see that. So that's probably the only sort of niggly detail, I would say, that is stopping this car from being perfect. Oh, look, there's another autonomous Tesla going in the opposite direction. Whoa, whoa. Okay, so it ain't perfect. It just went the wrong side of a traffic island. So technically onto the opposite side of the road. And it keeps coming back to that point, doesn't it? That it only has to make one cock up once for it to make the news. No one's ever gonna run a story about autonomous Tesla doesn't do anything wrong. You know, that's not gonna get any clicks, is it? But as soon as this thing takes out a cyclist, then I should have, should imagine it's gonna make quite a few headlines. Now turn right onto Heinemann Road. As the traffic builds, the challenges presenting the Tesla full self-driving system increase. A lot more variables as soon as you start throwing human drivers into the mix uh, and lots of cars. And that's what we're encountering here. Bit of traffic, roundabouts, junctions. It seems to favor a middle lane wherever it has the, the option. I don't know if that's just to give it the best chance of avoiding hazards or it can respond quicker to getting in another lane but where it only has a choice of two lanes then it's genuinely thinking ahead like it can obviously it knows the next navigation instruction coming up and it will get into lane quite early so there's not any of that last minute panic that you probably would get from a human driver in a funny way there's there's a, a few things and lessons this system can teach a couple of drivers on roads i see every day braking early, watching up ahead, responding early to conditions, not leaving stuff to the last minute. This, dare I say it, this is a better driver than some examples I see on the roads every day. While we're cruising in some stop-start traffic, it's probably a good time to talk about some of the things we don't know about this system. Now, Tesla's being very coy on details. In fact, they made a point in the press conference and the presentation today of saying there will be no Q&A. We don't want any questions at all just get in the car and experience it um perhaps that's just because they want to maximize the time we are in the car and enjoying the system or perhaps the skeptic in me thinks there's some difficult questions to answer that they're not quite ready to yet and one of those of course would be where's the legislation at the moment it's technically illegal to drive an autonomous car on australian roads now the legislation is coming along there's various departments working on it um, but Tesla is keen to make a point that this is not an autonomous car. It is uh, full self-driving assisted. It's level two. So in the scale of autonomous driving, uh, level five being the ultimate, hands off, car can handle everything, Tesla is claiming this is only level two. So it still requires the driver to do a majority of the monitoring. So quite where we are with the various legal bodies and the legislation surrounding what this car can do, um, we, we don't really know yet, and that will no doubt come out in time. And also exactly how this is going to be introduced is still not widely known. Now, Tesla does say that you can go online and click a box uh, and it will introduce, for a fee, the technology to your car, but we don't know exactly which models will be able to do that and how quickly that will, will take place. But as Tesla demonstrated with EVs, back when it started doing EVs, it has to prove the technology works first and then the legislation and the demand and all that will hopefully follow. Tesla is kind of taking the same stance again. It's going out there and proving the technology works and then hopefully the legislation will follow. Just like it did with electric vehicles. It proved the problem was not in the technology or the vehicles. It's in the infrastructure and the sales and the demand and people's attitude towards them. And that is changing. And I think that frankly, that the same will happen with- meters, turn right onto Glen Street, Laura Terrace. And frankly, I think exactly the same will happen with self-driving technology and ultimately autonomous technology. This vehicle is proving that we are not that far away from it. In a real world test, it's doing the job of a driver and I'm here to back it up, but it is staggering and really frankly impressive just how close we are to self-driving cars on our roads. Potentially tricky situation, there's a merge. So this requires a certain level of courtesy and politeness and I'd say it's actually got a decent level of both 
It's got a nice balance of politeness and aggression. Oh, but for some reason we're just slowing down here. I don't know why. Um, it has suddenly... I'm going to have to override. I don't know what it did then. It just pulled to the left and... Yeah, that was concerning. Okay, so I've had to take over driving there. It thinks it's a 30 kilometer an hour limit and it had just stopped driving at the speed limit, which is a freeway, and I have no idea why. I'm gonna try and restart autonomous driving now. Okay, it seems to have sorted itself out, even though it's still saying it's a 30 kilometer limit. But that was a bit concerning because we were coming onto a freeway, which is 90, it says. Now it's recognized that. But it didn't. It pulled over to the left. There was a truck behind me and as you probably heard, the truck beat me, as, as I would, as a, as a human driver. If someone isn't speeding up to freeway speeds, that could potentially cause a hazard. That's a pretty good example that there are still some bugs in the system to sort out. And I know if I put that question to Tesla, they'd probably say, yeah, it's beta testing, we're refining it, we're refining it, but the skeptic in me would probably say, well, there, isn't there always going to be situations where it kind of flips out and doesn't really know how to deal with the situation? Okay, now coming up to another merge here, you can see that vehicle there. It backs off slightly on the accelerator and allows space. It, it's good at dealing with the everyday, but every now and then something will confuse it and all it seems capable of doing in those situations is slowing down to walking pace and pulling over to the left which is you'd have to argue the, the safest thing you can do under the circumstances but that doesn't completely avoid making a hazard of yourself the way this system works is actually quite interesting it has an array of cameras all around the car um, and that is quite unique to Tesla's system. It doesn't really use any uh, LiDAR or radar. It's exclusively a camera-based monitoring system. And it takes information from its surroundings uh, and works out its entire world. And one of the guys from Tesla used a really interesting analogy. They said, when you come into a room for a meeting, even if you've never been into that room before, you look around, you'd see a table and some chairs, and you'd know that if you're gonna have a meeting, the chances are you need to sit down on one of the chairs at the table. Well, that's exactly what this car does every day when it's out on the road. It doesn't matter if it's not driven that specific road before, because it knows what it's looking for. There's white lines, barriers, other road users, uh, pedestrians, cars, hazards, as long as it... No and here we go, look, back to 60 again. Why? There's nothing to say we need to be doing 60, so I'm going to have to override and tell it. That's not the first time it's done it. It's, it's not a 60 limit. This is a 100 limit, and it's trying to slow me down on a freeway. We are not there yet, Tesla. So as long as this... Tesla has the information in its database, as long as it can look around and see things it recognizes, it's always going to be able to interpret its surroundings, hopefully safely. My concern is what happens when it meets something it's never seen before? Like, what if it's never seen a kangaroo? I wonder if it knows how to deal with one of those. That's actually not completely a stupid thing to say. Um, one of the car makers that was dealing with uh, its autonomous technology, uh, autonomous emergency braking, I think it was Mercedes, actually had quite a lot of problems with kangaroos because they're so unlike any other animal. It thought it was much closer to the car. Anyway, they solved the problem and I wonder if Tesla has had to deal with similar uh, problems. All right, time to leave the freeway. In 200 meters, enter the roundabout and take the second exit. It knows exactly what to do. It's telling itself its own navigation instructions and then it's doing them. So it's slowing down nice and smoothly. Honestly, there's a lot that some human drivers can learn from the way this car behaves on the road. It's quite polite, although it has a balance. It has a, it's got a bit of politeness when it needs to, but then also when there's a lot of traffic around and people hustling for places on the freeway or it can be slightly aggressive as well. And I don't know whether that's admirable or terrifying. The idea that 
an autonomous or semi-autonomous vehicle is in some way aggressive or a bit assertive is probably the, the more accurate word. Ooh. Don't be tempted to pick up your phone or be distracted by any other things you shouldn't be doing while driving, even though this car is doing a lot more than any other self-driving vehicle I've ever been in, it doesn't mean you can do some of those things. It's still very illegal to pick up your phone uh, and it's still very stupid to allow yourself to be distracted by pretty much anything else in the car. So although this car is very impressive and handles a lot of stuff while you're driving, it can't and won't do everything. There are a couple other challenges I'd like to see thrown at this car. It's just starting to rain a little bit now, and I'd love to know how it would go in torrential rain or the dark or fog. Tesla says it can do it all, absolutely, but we're dealing with relatively favorable conditions today. The other thing I'd like to see it do is some of those really tricky things, like a couple of times we've approached the zebra crossing and I was just hoping there'd be a pedestrian waiting to cross. Um, car parks with lots of people around, school zones, drunk people jumping out in front of the car. I'd love to throw a couple of those really difficult things at the Tesla. Um, but certainly, the early signs and everything I've seen is that it, it can and, and will deal with that. But if this feature was $10,000, which is I think what Tesla wants you to pay for it. Is it worth it? It's not an autonomous vehicle. I can't jump in the passenger seat drunk and tell it to take me in home. In 200 meters, enter the roundabout and take the second exit. Um, it's a very cool feature, but are you going to spend 10 grand on something just to impress your mates at the pub? I don't think so. So is it a bit too expensive at the moment? Probably. But will that technology cost come down? Absolutely it will. Maybe in a few years' time we'll be looking back at all these other vehicles that are offering similar levels of self-driving technology and saying, well, if Tesla hadn't introduced it back in 2025, you know, perhaps before some of the legislation was there, then no one else would be quite at the same point. I honestly think that is the way these things work. And there you have it. The most advanced level of self-driving technology currently available anywhere in a right-hand drive market. What do you think? Would you buy a car with this level of autonomy in it? Is it too much cash? Or is it really the future? Is this what cars will all be doing in not many years down the line? I'm still gonna be healthily skeptical, I think. Like, oh, what's the... <laughs> he says as the car just decides to pull to a halt. Okay. We're not there yet. In 200 meters, your destination will be on the left. But this has been a tantalizing view into what I think is a really, really cool future for cars. Like, if you don't want to drive yourself everywhere, fine. You don't have to. But if you do, and you're a driving enthusiast like us, then all of these autonomous cars are probably going to make your life a little bit easier. So just be happy for everyone, all right? And in the meantime, I'm going to take over and start accelerating for myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to the good old days. Thanks for watching. <laughs>